But although it may seem incredible, the collapse of the core of a massive star can take just a second or two, and that's what initiates the supernova explosion. Our own sun isn't massive enough to go supernova, but it is a giant ball of hydrogen, 330,000 times more massive than the Earth and burning by nuclear fusion. So our home star can hardly keep quiet, as our next hit proves. This hot combo chimes in at number seven on the countdown. Here it is, the Song of the Sun. The sun makes sounds, but they're not really sunny sounds. They're not happy sounds. They're kind of low, ominous roars that gurgle along. The sun makes sounds because there are a bunch of gases going up and down through a process called convection. So they're sending pressure waves through the ball of gas that is the sun, and it kind of rings like a bell. Unlike a bell, the sun rings with 10 million different tones at once. We detect them from the tiny bulges from the pressure waves on the sun's surface. Solar satellites measure the height of the bulges with exquisite accuracy. Apart from sound, they also produce science. So using these sounds from the sun that we can observe, we can actually tell very detailed things about the interior structure of our star. For example, one of the amazing things that we can tell is when there's a sunspot group on the other side of the star, even before it comes around the limb and we're able to see it with our optical telescopes. The sun may be the biggest source for sound in the solar system, but next in line is Jupiter. So coming in at number six in the top 10 is a medley of strange electronic jazz from Jupiter. Jazz from Jupiter comes to us courtesy of the two legendary Voyager spacecraft, now on their epic journey to the edge of the solar system. The two Voyager spacecraft are headed for interstellar space. They're on the very outer edges of the bubble the sun creates around itself. Today, Voyager 1 is 118 times as far from the sun as the Earth is, almost four times as far from the sun as Neptune is. Project scientist Ed Stone has been heading the Voyager mission since its two spacecraft made their grand tour of the outer planets beginning in 1979. On their approach to Jupiter, the first thing each one encountered was the giant planet's bow shock, producing a wind-like sound from the electronic data. There's a wind blowing outward from the sun at about a million miles per hour. It is supersonic. As that wind approaches contact with a magnetic field around, say, Jupiter, it has to go, it has to go subsonic. There is a sonic shock which forms in front of the magnetic field of Jupiter. That's called the bow shock. It's very much like a sonic shock in front of a supersonic aircraft. More intriguing than the bow shock is the Jovian chorus, sounding something like the chorus of birds chirping at dawn. Both it and the bow shock come from radio waves generated by fast-moving charged particles within the bubble of Jupiter's magnetic field. Now, the scramble toward the mysterious number one in the top 10 swings to the moons of Jupiter and the rings of Saturn, where the noises from electric loops, glowing gases, and streams of wind vie for distinction as the spookiest sounds in the solar system. The top 10 countdown in the alien sounds of the universe has reached Jupiter, sending out its own brand of space music. But the next hit is no solo. Jupiter has a backup group. They're the Jovian moons circling the giant planet and now they have their own album, 
it places at number five in the top 10, and the tune is called Moons Over Jupiter. The lead singer is the moon Ganymede, recorded by the Galileo spacecraft, arriving at Jupiter in late 1995. The sounds that Galileo sent back from Jupiter's moon Ganymede, by the way, the largest moon in the solar system, are very intriguing. They sound a little bit like an alien fax. In fact, when I played that sound clip in my office yesterday, people came around the corners to see what was going on if I was receiving some alien transmission. As with Voyager, Galileo's sounds came from ionized gas, or plasma. Atoms in a plasma are split apart into negative electrons and positive atomic nuclei. In other words, charged particles. Two slender antennas on the spacecraft's plasma wave instrument picked up the radio waves that the charged particles produced as they were set in motion by a magnetic field. These sounds that we hear from Ganymede are the evidence that Ganymede actually has a magnetic field. And you cannot find that information without using the plasma wave instrument as we did on Galileo. A very sudden burst of alien sound came from another of Jupiter's moons. It happened when Galileo flew over Io's North Pole. My favorite moon in the solar system is Jupiter's moon Io. It looks a lot like a pizza. This is the most volcanically active moon in the entire solar system, 10 or 100 times more volcanically active than the Earth. It literally spews tons of material into space every second, sulfur and oxygen atoms. These get ionized in Jupiter's magnetic field and actually connect back to Jupiter, to the North and South Poles, making a donut. The donut is called the Io flux tube, and the charged particles carry a monster electric current between Jupiter and its volcanic moon. As Galileo flew through it, the sound ended as abruptly as it started. 